Hey, what's going on, y'all? I made it back finally to do another video about the Healthy Trucking Summit from a few weeks ago. One of the big topics there was COPD. COPD includes emphysema, um, some forms of asthma, and some of the signs would be shortness of breath, coughing, and wheezing when you're breathing. And, you know, the reason that we are, as truckers, Alrighty then. <laughs> Some of the reasons that um, our likelihood of getting these diseases, uh, getting a COPD, is um, so high is because obviously we're in a sedentary lifestyle, um, which allows these things to to build up and these you know these problems to come into play. Whereas usually our body could ward away um, some uh, some of that taking place, but that usually takes place as a result of first and fir first and foremost smoking, but also secondhand smoke and also the environment pollutants in the environment, and then um, genes play a small part in some of the diseases, but the, um, most of it is greatly contributed to our own habits, our own decisions, as with a lot of other diseases that you are well. And besides, well, I want to tell you some more stuff about COPD though. Uh, just sort of hit home, there, there's estimated that over 12 million people have COPD and another 12 million are undiagnosed. COPD is the third leading cause of death in the U.S. Every four minutes, someone dies from COPD. So this is ser serious stuff, y'all. Um, in, in 2010, it was believed that 49.9 billion was spent on COPD related medical expenses. 210 million are affected with COPD right now and so deaths are expected to rise by 30 percent in the next 10 years. So probably one or two or more of y'all watching this video are going to say bye bye if you don't make some changes today um, in order to ward off the onset of COPD and that's real talk. Um, causes, I mentioned the causes are smoking, secondhand smoke, occupational dust, chemicals and genetics. Drivers are less aware of the disease because we don't put demands on our lungs and so we don't see the symptoms which are shortness of breath, coughing, wheezing when breathing. You're less likely to see, you see the symptoms. I know some of y'all see the symptoms because I done, talked, <laughs> I done talked to some people that walked across the parking lot or some people that I was talking to while walking across the parking lot and you have a mighty hard time trying to keep up, man. And uh, actually, I, I see some of y'all getting out of breath, you know, so um, you shouldn't take that lightly because that's not normal. And even if you just say, well, it's because I'm out of shape, yeah, but it's more serious than just being out of shape, you know. Um, that means you've been out of shape for too long and you need to, you need to stop just saying I'm, I'm out of shape or not even being consciously aware, just dismissing it and blowing it off as being out of shape. And you need to think about what that must be doing to your body to be that much out of shape and you need to make some changes. I didn't, uh, I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I wasn't recording this to get on that side of things today. I was just going to tell you what happened. <laughs> I'll get on you on another video. Dr. Chaco is somebody that's highly regarded um, by other doctors dealing with immunization, immune, 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 immune deficiencies. <laughs> Let's do it that way. Immune deficiencies and um, allergies. It'd be, uh, that's how serious he is in this field, but he was the one speaking. And I'm pointing these things out for um, trucking companies uh, that may take this lightly. Um, everyone that spoke was a real heavy hitter in their field and not only were they knowledgeable about the topics they discussed, they were passionate about um, spreading that knowledge and presenting it in a way that people who heard it was able to understand how significant of an issue it was but also how easily possible it is to have a positive impact on how it affected the drivers. But a lot of times the drivers, y'all are not necessarily going to 
do the proactive things that's needed in order to take advantage of the information that's available. So as a trucking company, you have an opportunity to take advantage of some of these programs that exist and provide that benefit for your driver. And I didn't mean to get into all that either, but we're here now. And if you, in fact, take advantage of these programs, it's not only going to benefit that driver, but will you not, as a company, also benefit from, from having healthier drivers? Huh? In more ways than one, because uh, this guy is more productive, he's um, less depressed because he's more capable, he's more able, he's more healthier. So he got less issues to worry about on the side. But but he's also uh, high, has a higher level of focus. He's you know what I mean more more efficient at his job. So obviously you would benefit from having an employee like that. But you also got a guy who realized that you care about more than the bottom line. You um, care about his health, his well-being. Uh, so. That's something that's um, that's going to help him to be more loyal to the company. That's going to help him feel more like a team member, and that's going to help him. And even if he don't see it that way, because some people won't, and just see it as a benefit, and that's something that I can get. But still, you got somebody that's likely to perform their job better because uh, they want to stay somewhere where they have access to all of this, where this is part of the benefits package, instead of going somewhere else. So there's many reasons why, as an employer, you should take advantage of this. But I would, I would advise you to attend the next meeting so that as new things come uh, available, you are made aware of it. And there, are, there is uh, something else that's I think is very cool that they uh, talked about there. But I'll get to it in a minute. I want to tell you about the light study program, which. Uh, don't y'all go nowhere, drivers, just because you hear me talking to employers, trucking company owners. Uh, this video is for both of y'all. Um, there's a light study program that is for people, that is for drivers who are, said to me, let's go. So another person that spoke, so another person that spoke at the Healthy Trucking Summit was Dr. Pamela Thomas, and she talked about diabetes. Basically, she was just pointing out how big of a problem that was, which it is. These numbers are quite uh, alarming. 79 million people are believed to be pre-diabetic. 7 million have the disease and are undiagnosed. She said for people born in the year 2000, one in three will develop the disease, and one in six will die from it. And one third of those would not even be diagnosed. So, you know, again, whole reason I made a video, man, because uh, this is some alarming stuff when you really listen to the numbers. Uh, because uh, if you're in a, with a group of people right now watching this video, it's scary. Because I did say one in three will develop it if he was born in 2000. And one in six will die from it if he was born in 2000. One third of you will not be diagnosed. It's serious, man. But... You know, these really are the numbers, in my head, as I understand it, if the people um, that fits this category don't do anything. So if you start changing your habits, you know, you don't have to be in this number. This includes a large number of truck drivers since we often say that there are few choices for eating healthy and most of us do little or no exercise. Behavior was a key factor that she mentioned, which could help you be a statistic or beat the odds. Thanks for joining. And he uh, was talking about fitness and obesity, which of course is what contributes to diabetes to a large extent. And what they're doing is a light study program. This is research. This is a Medical research. We'll get to that in a minute. Another video.